my name is Hussain. I'm working as a marketing manager in Dubai. I want to know when the soul of the righteous person is taken out. It is mentioned in the hadith that it goes up through all the heavens, seven, six, five, till, till the top. And all the people welcome them, who is he, then the angel says, son of so and so. Correct. So, oh, when does this happen? Is it after the questioner in the graveyard or I mean the sequence of events? The soul is taken out, then it, is there some waiting time? And then the body goes to the grave. After that, does it start? Is it before the questions or after the questions? According to, according to Jazakallah Khair, I've understood your question. The, according to the hadith which is muttafaq alayhi in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, this happens immediately. As a person dies, the soul shoots up, shoots straight up. One, two, three, it's greeted by name. So the angels ask, who is this good person? And, and, and uh, immediately the response comes, Fulan ibn Fulan, such and such a person, son of such and such a person. And this is why we say you're going to be known by the name of your father. So even if someone's you know, identity is hidden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us, you, taught, you, you use the name of your dad. So what happens is th they will be told so and so, so and so, and they will know who the person is because the angels right now would know that they've taken the deeds of this person and that person and whatever else it is. And so that hadith in, in which is muttafaq alayh makes mention of it before the questioning. And then it states that the soul immediately returns. I don't know the time frame of it. And it immediately returns for the questioning in the grave. Wallahu alam. And like I said yesterday, we have to stop where the hadith stops where it starts we start and these uh, uh, matters of the unseen we have no capacity to respond further than revelation may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and may I end with the dua may Allah make us from amongst those whose souls go up as good souls I mean and uh, Surah Mulk, can it save from graveyard punishment if you read every... According, to, according to one of the narrations, the narration is, is there and according to you, you would read the Surah. But one thing we need to know is that there are certain ahadith which make mention of, you know, some of the Surahs, Al-Kahf and so on. It does not mean that my life is being led like a total stranger to Islam and just because I read Surah Mulk, I'm going to be saved. You know, one man, for example, he, uh, he said, well, is it true that on such and such a day, if a person dies, then, you know, they're going to be saved from this type of punishment of the grave and so on. So if I want to die, I'll just kill myself on that day. Na'udhu Billah. That is wrong. That is absurd, completely absurd. So we need to know that when it comes to recitation, it must be coupled with action and it must be coupled with obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when it will benefit you. And also what is extremely beneficial, you know, the Quran has, has benefit from the beginning to the end. Every verse has some miraculous aspect to it. It's the word of Allah. It has in it so much of cure, so much of spirituality, so much of message and so on. So I would love to believe, and this is my own practice, that if you pick up the Quran and make sure that you read from cover to cover and you move with it as it is on a daily basis you have a certain amount of recitation such that you begin to cover the Quran on a regular basis the impact and the benefit will be far more than if you were to just read a specific surah for a specific reason and ignore the rest of the Quran Allah knows best Jazakumullah khair